So welcome to the Well Socialized Pet Chat. As I said, my name is Juliet. Thank you all for joining me today. As I mentioned, today's topic is going to be socializing our pets um, to novel objects and experiences. Now, the reason we're recording today's session is because the holiday season is upon us. We've got Halloween coming up and we've got that going all the way through New Year's with new things happening for our pets that especially if they're younger or new to your home, they may not have experienced before or in the way that you celebrate and experience those holidays yourself. So let's go ahead and dig into that a little bit more. Um, first, I wanna go ahead and talk about novelty in general and how we can think about that in regards to our pets. Anything our pet has never experienced before or that we don't know what they've experienced before could potentially feel overwhelming for them or scary or just kind of exciting. It really depends how your pet feels about new and different things. This could include sounds, it could include textures, it could include locations, people, just things around your house, um, around your neighborhood. There's so many things that can be included in this. And oftentimes when we have younger pets, we might think about how we can expose them to new things while they're young, but we often think very much in the moment as opposed to over time, right? So over time, we know that we're going to do many, many things with our pets, whether it's travel, whether it's, um, you know, just setting up our house in different ways for the holidays, again, like we'll discuss today. And we want to really be thinking about that throughout our lives. What types of things do we enjoy doing? You know, whether it's sporting activities, whether it's, again, different types of travel, planes, trains, automobiles, boats, bikes, whatever it might be, um, exposing our pets to as many new things as possible, not just based on what's happening right now in your life, but what you might want to do with your pet down the road. If you had a pet during COVID, for example, you probably weren't taking them out as many places because you weren't going out as many places. But thinking ahead about some of those things can really help you set them up for success down the road. Now, when it comes to the holidays specifically, um, there are so many pieces that are novel for our pets. And while we might think of Halloween as being the scary holiday, the others definitely have their challenges as well that can still feel pretty scary and overwhelming. For example, that 12 foot tall inflatable Santa, super, super weird if you're a pet. So let's go ahead and dig into some of that. When we think about Halloween, we'll start there. Um, we have a lot of things happening. Now, the first of those things might seem like the obvious ones, costumes, right? If I walk up to my pet and I'm wearing this and I come out of my room like that, they might be like, whoa, what's going on? Who are you? Uh, true story, I once showed up at a friend's house uh, for a masquerade in full peacock costume, um, makeup, headdress, a massive moving tail. And her cat took one look at me and was like, all of my nightmares have come true, disappeared under a bed and avoided me for the next six months so I came over to visit. So we don't want to put our pets through that really scary experience if we don't have to, have to, whether it's Halloween or whether it's Comic-Con or whatever else you might do that might involve dressing up differently than you do every day. So if you're going to introduce them to things like masks or accessories or different things like that, start by putting this on the floor and letting them look at it or approach it or sniff it or interact with it in appropriate ways and build confidence with those novel objects in all of those different ways that you want them interacting with it. So for your pet to pick it up or play with it, not be a way we want them to interact, but sniffing it, approaching it, you know, all of that might be fine. You can also do this as an aside with any sporting equipment that you might use with umbrellas, with, you know, big puffy winter jackets, which we don't wear as often here in San Diego, but might be a thing if you're traveling or moving down the road. Um, so keep things like that in mind. Introduce them to these things slowly. Again, if it's a mask, once they've seen it and they've checked it out on the ground, pick it up, move it around, hold it by your face, then put it down, put it, you know, on it down. Let your pet get used to those things. Some pets don't care. They'll get really comfortable with that really fast, especially if they're younger. But others will be like, hmm, not sure what's going on. So watch for those small stress signals. The moment they seem kind of avoidant or like they're less comfortable with something, stop what you're doing, back down the intensity, and let them get comfortable again with wherever they were at the last stage of that um, exposure. Really, really important. Again, the same thing goes for accessories. If you're into cosplay or superheroes or things like that, um, a lot of those costumes involve big, you know, oversized accessories. So really keep those sorts of things in mind. Again, going back to sporting gear, if you're into football, for example, there's helmets, there's lots of padding that makes you look very different. 
So always keep things like that in mind. If I'm going to make myself look weird or look different, get my pet used to it. Now, with things like Halloween, there's often a lot of sounds that are scary, whether it's soundtracks that play, you know, motion sensors when you walk into a Home Depot or a CVS with your pet, or whether it's things that are happening in your neighbor's yard or in your own home, we might have things that make sounds. Get your pet used to those in ways that are going to be more, um, again, successful for them. That might include walking with a friend and sitting, you know, in a yard one or two yards away from the yard that makes a lot of noise as you go past it and have a friend go by it first and let them see like, look, this person is doing fine. They don't seem to care. Or if it um, is something that's triggered by motion, again, have someone go past it at a distance where your dog can watch and hear or your cat if, they're, if you're at home and, um, you know, reinforce them remaining calm while hearing that sound at a less close proximity with less intensity. It won't be quite as loud. Um, it won't be as startling. Let them hear it see it, etc. When you are close to them, that way there's less going on, especially if the things both move and make sound, which is super, super weird for our pets. And that goes for all holidays, not just Halloween. Additionally, with Halloween, we've got people coming to the door, not just once or twice, like you might have with, well, maybe, you know, Thanksgiving or Christmas or things like that or other holidays, but coming to the door repeatedly, usually over several hours. That can be super, super challenging, especially if your pets are fearful of door knocks and doorbells. So either putting signage outside and saying, hey, um, you know, please knock, don't use the bell or covering up your bell. That way, if your pet is okay with knocks, but not okay with doorbells, you can um, minimize some of that stress and some of that stimulation. You can also do things like um, getting your pet used to those sounds. So I can record the sound of my doorbell or I can play the knock knock game. I'll describe both of those things. If I'm recording my doorbell, I want to go outside with my phone and I'm going to turn on my video recorder and I'm going to count to two and I'm going to ring my doorbell just once. When it's done, I'm going to count to three, ring it again, count to three, ring it again, count to three, stop recording. What that's going to do is that you have a series of samples of that sound and you're able to change the volume on your phone, but honestly, load it to your computer and play with the volume from there because you have more fine scale control. We talk about this more in our desensitizing pets to sound chat. Um, the play them that sound at low volumes where it's not scary, where you can reward calm, settled behavior. This is a great game to pair with mat work, um, which we teach in both our cat and dog training classes. Teaching your pets to settle on a mat and have good things happen from that spot means you can teach them to potentially down the road, it's a bit more of a complex build, go to that mat when they hear a doorbell or a knock as opposed to disappearing under your bed for two weeks. So, you know, play with things like that. Get your pet used to those sounds. It's just being sounds in their environment that aren't a big deal. The knock-knock game is a really fun little game we can play with any of our pets where you, with them in front of you, paying attention to what you're doing, just knock on the floor in front of you while you're sitting on the ground and give them a treat because they're like, well, I don't care what you're doing. It's just you're knocking on the floor. And then just knock around you again where they can see things and then knock slightly behind you and then knock up on a cabinet. Knock all over the place until it just becomes a thing comes a game and then start standing up and knocking on an interior doorway like the closet behind me and then open up that door and knock on the inside of it where your pet can't see you knocking but clearly knows that you are the one knocking and then play with more and more doors around the house and then knock on an exterior door and then open that exterior door and knock on it and just desensitize them to that whole process and you can do that in oftentimes just like a handful of sessions so you've got plenty of time between now and Halloween and of course other holidays Get them used to stuff like that. If people coming into the home is a challenging behavior, again, mat work is going to help you out here, giving your pet a place to go and settle where they feel safe and calm. And that mat could be in the space where your company is going to be, or it could be in a different room, depending on your pet's comfort level with new people and that type of stimulation. Quick note on new people. Remember, people are different, right, as we go through our lives and as individuals whether that is differences in age and activity level. For example, adults are pretty boring, whereas kids are much less predictable and they tend to be a lot louder and a lot more erratic. And that can be really hard for some pets, um, you know, infancy through younger, you know, I guess older children, you know, like above, above seven or eight. Um, there's big differences in their behavior and interactions and sounds and smells and everything else as well. So definitely expose them to a range of children. And I'll include some handouts in the follow-up that cover kids-specific interactions. Again, we cover people interactions in our, um, our third topic on socializing with animals and people in this chat series. 
Let's see. Um, if you do have people coming over to your home for any of the holidays, make sure that you are keeping food that your pets should not be having out of their reach. This is especially true with Halloween candy, right? We want to keep it by the door, um, oftentimes on like a table that we can easily reach. Make sure your pets can't reach it or just keep them contained. Keep them in a back room where they can't dash out the door. Um, they can't get into things they shouldn't get into. They aren't barking and seeing all the weird people in weird costumes. Again, use management as much as you can to help your pets be successful in this. With any holiday where folks are coming over to your home, maybe have your pet hang out in the bedroom in the back of the home until everyone has arrived and then they can come out and calmly interact with folks. Again, that can set you up for success. Um, if you have a second person available, maybe they're hanging out with your pet as folks arrive um, just to kind of reward them for being calm as they're here in the door and they're you know, hearing folks come in and different things like that. Um, lots of ways to use management and help our pets be successful in those situations. Let's see, so company coming over and being in your home with food. So we all like to spoil our pets around the holidays if we have the opportunity. So if you wanna sneak your pets some turkey or some steak or whatever it is, um, make sure that you're doing so safely and make sure that your guests are doing the same thing. We all have that one family member who's like, oh, let's sneak the pet something off my plate. And that might be okay now and again, but there are so many things that we use in our food that isn't great for our pets, whether it's just higher salt or sugar quantities than usual, whether it's um, seasonings and spices like garlic. Garlic is toxic for cats. It makes their um, blood vessels rupture. So just be really aware of what's in the food people might be feeding your pets. And a great way to set up for success is just make little Ziploc bags of treats and say, hey, you know, thank you for coming over. If you want to give my pet treats, use this. And maybe you've taken a piece of chicken or turkey or whatever else, and you've cut it up into little treat sized pieces and each guest has a few pieces they can give to the pet if they want to spoil them, but spoil them safely. And this also holds true if you're bringing your pet to someone else's home. Um, set them up for success beforehand. I would recommend that work for that. And um, bring your own treats so folks know if they do want to spoil your pet that they are able to do so safely with your guidance. Um, additionally, if you are going to bring your pet with you when you travel for the holidays, whether it's local or whether it's further, um, to the best of your ability, make sure your pet is ready for that. Sometimes it's really big and overstimulating, especially if they're newer to your home. So they may not be quite ready for that yet. Um, this year, it may be easier to stay home. Um, or if your family that you're going to visit has other pets in the home, make sure that you're preparing for that. If possible, have them send you something belonging to that pet in advance. You can do some um, scent work introductions with that animal smell being a good thing. And I'll include some resources about introducing pets in the follow-up email as well. But play with all of those pieces and really keep it in mind. And we talked about sounds for Halloween, but remember we have lots of things that make noise with um, decorations for other holidays as well. Now when it comes to decorations for other holidays, oh my gosh, can we talk about Christmas? Stuff in yards, stuff that lights up, stuff that moves, stuff that makes noise. If you're celebrating high feathers or um, Kwanzaa, there might be candles with open flames. Be really aware of how we're setting our pets up for success around some of those holidays because we don't want our pets interacting with things that could be potentially very dangerous um, for them or for us in our homes. So always be aware of that. For example, with ornaments that are on trees, we don't want our pets chewing on those, especially if they're like, you know, old gingerbread or things like that um, or salt based or any of those types of ornaments. Make sure that your pet is taught to look at those things at a distance, but turn away and do something else. Again, mat work can help with this. Um, a leave it behavior can help with this. General redirection can help with this. But make sure your pets are behaving appropriately with those items. If you're going to have open flames, you know, candles of any sort, honestly, in your home, put them on the ground in front of your pet or put them wherever they're going to be in front of your pet, unlit. And if your pet looks at it, you can draw their attention whatever way you want to by going over to it and interacting with it. Your pet looks at it, reinforce them when they turn their head away. If there's nothing happening and they look over just to see what you're doing, they'll probably turn their head away pretty quickly because nothing is happening. So you can reinforce that doing something different and not interacting more closely. So play with things like that just builds disinterest in some of those items around the home. Remember also that a lot of ornaments and other decorations are reflective. So that can be spooky for some pets. And many of them look like toys. They're colorful, they're round, you know, they might make noise, they might be fluffy. So just really be mindful of that. Our pets are always going to do the best they can with the behavior they have and the information they've learned about how to interact with their environment. You'll get more about that in our um, also recorded chat on how animals learn. 
Um, but always make sure that you're setting them up for success. If our pet interacts with something in a way that we don't approve of, we have to make sure we've taught them what to do instead. That way they can be successful with that novel object, that novel experience. So be really aware of some of those pieces as well. We have about 10 minutes left. So what I'm gonna do first is pause and see if we have any holiday specific questions. And if not, I'm going to dive in and spend a little bit of time on textures because it's another topic I really like to dive into when it comes to novelty. So either you can unmute or you can toss them in a the chat. Are there any questions about holiday related socialization and novelty? I'll give it about 10 more seconds. Okay, I'm not seeing anything, but I'll keep my eye on the chat just in case. So textures, textures are huge when it comes to getting our pets socialized. And that can involve textures in your home, textures out of your home, textures with food, textures with toys, um, all different things. So let's start with, let's start with food because it's a, a quick and easy one. So this is a bigger deal for cats, typically more than it is for dogs when it comes to textures and food. But if you ever had a pet who only eats one type of food and one type of flavor, it's typically because they weren't exposed to different textures or flavors when they were younger. So when at all possible, expose your pet to different types of foods, whether it's different textures of wet food, um, you know, different types of treats. Um, getting them used to different textures is really important. A pro tip I like to toss out there, especially if we're talking about giving our pet medication down the road and, and husbandry and things like that, which is also a chat topic, um, pill pockets. Pill pockets are a really unique texture. I have yet to find a treat for dogs or cats with that same kind of gluteny, squishy texture. So I like, whenever I have pill pockets in my house, I like to take a couple of them and break them up into little tiny um, pieces. I can get about, depending on if it's a big one or a small one, um, five to seven little tiny, 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 like grain of rice um, sized little round treats out of it. And I'll just use those as training treats for my pet in the mix of their other treats. That way they've had that texture before and they already have good associations with it. And your treats don't have to be quite that tiny. They can be pea sized. Um, but I like to break them up really small because I'm usually training cats. So, um, you know, tiny little pea sized pieces are also fine for your pill pockets, but they can be a little bit smaller also. But get your pet used to some of those weird textures. Um, again, different types of wet food, super important for reducing picky behaviors and for just getting your pet used to those different things. Now, some pets, as a quick note, do have um, sensitive tummies when it comes to different textures. So you may find that some pets have a preference because it just digests better. So you can always you know, check some of that with your vet as well if they are having trouble. Um, but when you can, introduce different types of textures with their food. Now, texture is also important when it comes to food bowls for dogs and cats. If you go from a plastic dish to a ceramic dish to a stainless steel dish, there are big differences there. Some are easier to move, some are more stable than others if they're you know, being pushed around, and some are reflective. Anything stainless steel is really reflective. So if your pet isn't used to having a dish that kind of reflects back at them in a distorted way, that can be strange. Additionally, it's reflective with light. So I have known pets who, if their dish um, is underneath a light source or it's getting a lot of glare from a light source, it kind of makes them avoid it a bit more. So you can always play around with things like that. Other textures are gonna be in surfaces, both in and out of the home, whether it's the surface of your bathtub, whether it's hard flooring versus linoleum, well, hard wood-esque flooring versus linoleum versus tile or stone, um, the temperature differences, how um, slippery they are, all of those things are gonna be different, different types of carpeting. Um, when you're outside, cement versus asphalt versus grass versus mulch versus sand versus that like rubberized um, playground flooring, all of that's different. Get your pet used to those different textures because again, it's gonna make a difference. And especially with temperature, that can make a really big difference for how comfortable your pet is with those as well. Metal, for example, those metal grates on the ground gets both really cold and really hot. Um, asphalt is much hotter than cement. Um, we all know what hot sand feels like. So if you're taking your pet to different areas to experience different textures, be, you know, keep temperature in mind as you're doing so because we don't want to make that experience bad accidentally. And um, 
If your pet is having trouble on, for example, a slippery linoleum floor like at a pet store, um, make sure their nails are trimmed. That can make a big difference also. If you're, I'm not sure if you can hear that, if you're hearing their nails when they walk on the ground, their nails are too long, get those trimmed. It will help them get a bit more um, traction on the ground when their paw, paw pads are touching it and they're not walking on their tiptoes, which is less comfortable. Um, so obviously keep things like that in mind as well. Um, textures can also make a big difference when it comes to different toys. Again, getting our pets used to different textures can help them play more readily with different things, especially if they're younger and teething. So within that first two year period, um, if they just have soft toys, you might find them chewing on harder things like furniture or your walls um, because they're trying to kind of massage those gums a bit more. So different textures in their toys is helpful. There's also dental toys for cats that are really good. So play with different textures. Um, texture with cats also makes a big difference with their scratching posts. So some cats have very strong preferences of what they do or don't like. Um, orientation can also make a difference. Upright, vertical, horizontal, some wavy shapes, whatever else. Texture makes a really big difference for a lot of our pets with the different things they interact with. So be creative. Play around with different textures. Take your pet different places. Um, if you want to take your cat outdoors, because more and more of us are restraining our cats, um, get them used to outdoor textures. Go outside and grab a whole bunch of different pet safe things from outdoors, um, whether it's rocks, whether it's leaves, whether it's mulch, whether it's sand, whatever you want, and just put it into a box and let your cat or dog or whatever explore those different textures, explore those different smells. Really great way to get accustomed to the outdoor environment that you want to take them to in positive ways. Just fair warning, if you're bringing in cat, uh, sand for your cat to interact with, they might use it as a litter box. So use your best judgment there. Um, but get your pet used to those different textures in whatever ways you can. And that can be a really nice way of getting them comfortable with those new things before they go experience them in a really big way the first time. Um, any questions about textures? All right, cool. Let's see, any other novelty that you've run into with your pets that might be challenging? I'll keep watching the chat, but there's one more thing I realized I forgot to cover specifically, and that is fireworks. Um, I forgot New Year's, everyone. So New Year's obviously can be super challenging for our pets. It's right up there with 4th of July. Um, if you did not know this, I'm, I'm not going to call it a fun fact, but 4th of July is the day when there are more pets brought into shelters than any other day of the year. Quick note on the 4th and just fireworks in general. Fireworks are super, super hard for pets, both cats and dogs. Um, and, and other animals as well. They can be sensitive to it, although they're not escaping, so we may not notice it as much. Um, they're really broadband sounds. What that means is they make sounds that are both very low and also very high. So they're making sounds that we may not hear as well as our dogs and cats because they have a wider hearing range than we do. Um, our cats especially hear much higher because the animals they are hunting um, also use much higher frequency communications. So we may not really be hearing those sounds quite as intensely as our pets are. So really keep that sort of thing in mind, keeping them in a quiet room that has padding around open doors you know, or un underneath doorways if it is an outdoor space, keeping windows closed, all of that can make a difference, having common music playing, and of course, desensitizing them to firework sounds. I'll send you a great track that you can use to get them comfortable with that. And the one that I'm gonna send you is gonna be, I think just straight fireworks, but there's another um, track from that same group that is fireworks with crowds. So if your pet is accompanying you to a fireworks show, which honestly we don't recommend, um, you can get them used to fireworks with crowds as well. But typically with fireworks, keep your pet home, keep your pet indoors, keep your pet safe. Even pets who typically don't react to sounds um, can react very strongly to fireworks. Um, I've known beagles who jump at the eight foot fence who have gotten loose. Um, that have never tried jumping a fence before. And they're obviously not as big as something like a husky or a shepherd who you might expect to jump an eight-foot fence. Um, but fear can make our pets capable of amazing feats. So always, always be mindful of that. Leave your pet home if you can. Keep them safer, keep them indoors, and get them comfortable with these things if you're able to do so. All right, um, I think that's what we're going to cover for today. You'll get additional resources in the follow-up email, and we hope to see you registered for additional sessions of this class. Um, the next chat will be next weekend and we'll be talking about enrichment, which covers a little bit of everything because so is enrichment. Thank you all again for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording for today.